right, good morning everyone and welcome to Take Market Prep. I hope you're having an amazing morning. Hope you guys had an incredible, I was going to say weekend, but I was going to say incredible day yesterday, uh, weekend for me. Peter, good morning, my friend. How's it going? Good morning, Carlos. I'm doing great. So happy to have you back. I hope you had a great, great time off. Uh, oh man, I had a really good time. You could tell by my voice, all the screaming and fun and all the good stuff that uh, took place in Savannah. Yeah, had an amazing, amazing time. Um, as long as the screaming was in excitement and not in terror, then that's a good thing. <laughs> it was all in excitement and a very joyous uh, time. Yes, absolutely. Um, all right, guys. Welcome, welcome. Good morning to everybody. So we get started on this uh, Tuesday morning. Hopefully yesterday was good for you guys. Um, not a lot going on at the moment as far as news-wise. Um, I know there's some stuff happening with our government at four, some other things in play. Looking at our gappers list quickly before we dive into the news. Um, we do have a couple of names here gapping up this morning. NVAX making a nice run here. This is another one up as well, 17%. We got Ryan and Mara also up a bit here. So maybe some t a Bitcoin action uh, bringing those up slightly there. And then the gap down a lot more on here. And I see the banks are back down again. I know they had a rally based on the show title that I was editing uh, from you, Peter, um, last week. And I see there at least this one, Pack W, which seems to be the one that is being talked about the most, dropping now 8%. So we'll dive into that. But then outside of that, we got a couple of really well-known tickers, Lucid, PayPal, I mean, Wayfair, Carvana, Baba, JD, PDD, and Top, and Top is the one that's been going mad, insane, madly insane lately. But all these tickers we know. So looking forward to see um, how they're doing this morning, what the price action looks like, if there's anything we can play here. And I noticed that they're all in different fields as well. It's not like one sector just dropping, right? You got a little bit of everything on the gap down this morning. So can't wait to dive into that. But before we do so, Let's head to my man here, Peter, and see what's going on with the overall news and market for today. Well, relatively quiet. If you're listening to Engineering the Markets with Jared, as he was mentioning, markets are starting slightly down this morning, uh, but nothing serious. Uh, oh, and what the heck? And for some reason, my, oh, I left the uh, <laughs> I left the comment in at the bottom. I was challenging everybody to see if they actually read my economic calendar. <laughs> I'll fix that. <laughs> Anyways, that was uh, that was a thing for John. Um, but we do have a couple of items. Nothing major today, really, right? We Right now, uh, the Fed Gov Jefferson should be speaking at an event. Uh, we've got the red book that comes out, which is uh, retail sales. Uh, that's going to come up before the market open. At 10 o'clock, we've got this IBD Economic Optimism Index, which doesn't typically have a big market impact. And we got the New York Fed President Williams speaking around noon. Again, not a big, not a big, uh, uh, you know, event in any one of these. However, lately we've been seeing some market reaction, no matter what the announcement is. So it's worth keeping a note on these times. Watch at eight fifty-five, right? See if we get any reaction from the market of the red book. Watch at ten if you're in a trade, just to see if the market does, you know, any blips, increased in volume. Uh, increases in volume or sudden movements on like a, a number of stocks, especially those that follow the, the stock, the indices. So it's worth keeping an eye on these things just to be aware of them. But again, I don't expect too much. The news of the day for me is really on. We've got a, a number of earnings as earnings season continues here. A lot of uh, focus on um, uh, EVs. We got a number of EV companies that are reporting that we'll talk about. And you know what? The, the insanity continues. Like it doesn't seem to matter what you report. Uh, you, 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 there's no predicting which way things are going to go. And, and to that end, anybody that was trying to trade PayPal after hours, uh, you know, my condolences to you because it was it was a rough go, man. We'll we'll get into that in a minute. All right. Yeah, let's dive into all of this here. Let's take a look at our gappers list this morning. Uh, we'll start with uh, what's capping uh, up this morning. Let's start here with S. S H L S and this one we are up 15%. Volume is very light. Doesn't really look all that good for the way we trade, guys. So we, I might skip on this one. Um, Peter, any any news worth watching this thing? This is a solar uh, company, and uh, they did have earnings, which is why they're popping up here. Um, you know, uh, their numbers were good, which you could generally guess. So you know, if there's one consistent, if they're on the green side, everything has to be good. It, it almost has to be pristine. But after some of the not so good um, earnings uh, results from some of their competitors, the fact that they had a good, 
you know, good quarterly outlook um, seems to have been reflected positively in their stock. Keep in mind, relatively low volume, though. We're only talking 130,000 shares so far today. So while it's up almost 16 percent, that pre-market activity looks pretty, uh, pretty poor. Yeah, yeah, uh, definitely don't like this one right now, guys. Might actually get better if you look at the chart overall. If you zoom back a little bit, doesn't get a whole lot of volume um, for the way it trades. So we'll skip on it for now. Let's go to Envax. Envax on our list this morning. These guys are up 5.4, um, 244,000 shares traded. Man, Envax is seven dollars, uh, insane. But um, but here you have it. Pre market action, 244,000. I don't know how this has been trading lately. I know it's been making our gap up and down this more often than it had before when it was going to the stretch. It was really not really gapping up or down, right? Um, yeah. Peter, have you seen the price action on NVAX at this price level? <laughs> I haven't watched it. To me, just the ticker is like a blast from the past, right? Because this was a big yeah. COVID play, and I, I haven't really looked at it in quite a while because, yeah, it hasn't it hasn't traded well. So I don't know. Maybe today we'll uh, we'll find out together. This is an example, though, of of you like there's no predicting what's going to happen with earnings. So they had earnings, they missed all their numbers, like they were terrible. But they announced that they're going to lay off 25 percent of their workforce. One out of every four people in this company is getting the axe. Mm. I guess the market thinks that's good news. Oh, by the way, they're still pounding the COVID drum, and they've got a phase two trial of another COVID screening test, and that's going well. So I guess the market likes the latter two things because they certainly shouldn't be liking their earnings, um, and we're gapping up by whatever it was, 14 15% so far. So I don't know. Go figure. All right. Looks like this. they're trying to write out some more vaccines, it looks like here uh okay yeah. <laughs> good, good luck with that um but yeah here, here you have mvax let's look at riot my friends let's take a look there um up 2.5 288 000 shares traded uh hasn't really been trading well and rise probably the least one of my favorites out of all of these i like mara i would prefer coin if we can get it to trade well um they're up slightly uh, just overall bitcoin action on these yeah th look the, the only the biggest news i saw in this space was that uh, there's a, a consortium of some large players, Microsoft, Deloitte, uh, Goldman Sachs, and the CBOE, which is the Chicago Board of um, the Chicago Board of Exchange, anyways, um, and a couple of others. They're planning to launch, and I, I love the buzzwords here: the the industry's first privacy-enabled interoperable blockchain network. Basically. They're getting into the uh, cryptocurrency, you know, uh, space uh, with this blockchain offering. And uh, while that's not directly related to Riot or Coin or Mara that I can see, they seem to be getting a lift from, I think, the fact that, you know, any large announcement like this, especially when you get those types of players involved in it, um, it it's just seen as a validation, perhaps, of the industry and uh, a likely opportunity for them to grow what they're doing. All right. Um, I, I don't like it as much today, guys. Uh, I'll keep it on the side for now. Let's take a look at uh, another one on this list. One that we missed might just they just popped up here. IPDN wasn't there a minute ago, but IPDN. Uh, oh, yeah, this is hard, which is kind of getting above 5% of 2% to hit our scan is above 141. But th this price is uh, is horrible. So We'll, we'll skip on that one. Another one that we might like a lot better. BA, the last one on our list this morning. Okay. And look at this. Nice little pop today. Um, do they have earnings or anything on BA this morning? No, BA, they did have an announcement. Uh, Ryanair, I think, committed a, uh, to a $40 billion purchase of new planes. Uh, but that's been talked about for a while, but I guess they finally sort of pulled the trigger and committed to that. So mm -hmm. so that's, that's good for them that they've got more orders on deck. All right. Uh, just back to I... PDN, you know, yeah. something that pops up randomly like that. Guess what the news was? They're, they are, by the way, a staffing and employment services company. But they announced layoffs. No, has to be layoffs. Well, the, 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 yeah, there you go, Zero <laughs> Fox. AI. Oh, AI, AI is the other one. That's right. That's right. <laughs> of an AI company. So look at them. They're in the AI game. Woohoo. Let's pump the stuff. Layoffs would have been more exciting for a staffing company. That would have been really, that would have been really <laughs> it right there. Um, all right, we'll go AI. Let's leave it even as good. 
Um, Seems a little ironic, but anyways, <laughs> that's, uh, welcome, welcome to the world. <laughs> exactly. Uh, don't like IP the end at all, guys. We'll leave that alone uh, for now. Let's take a look at BA. I do like BA. I'm going to add them to my list. Um, and remember, these guys sometimes don't get the the best pre market activity. Um, but I like this news here. Something positive for them. Let's see if they can get any kind of momentum um, off that news. Even though I know something has been said already, but they've been down here. So this could be something that just gives them a little bit of spark this morning. So we'll see. We'll see how it looks. We definitely seem better, um, but I think it's worth being on our list this morning. Uh, gap down. Let's see what's happening here. We'll start with uh, SWKS, uh, and this is Skyworks. We are down 11, uh, almost 12% this morning, 163,000 shares traded. Looks like some action happening around 835 this morning. Hmm. Skyworks had earnings after the close yesterday. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, they, they, look, most of the major uh, semiconductors have announced they are a semiconductor company. Um, so uh, they, you know, early on, though, uh, because their guidance for the forward quarter was low, they had actually, uh, they were actually dropping. And uh, you can see that that sort of continued through this morning. So really, their earnings were okay. But their guidance, like most semiconductors, said you know they're not looking forward to a great uh, quarter. So here we go down the uh, downward. That being said, you know it doesn't last all that long. If I'll just diverge for a second. Yesterday, AMD had a big boost. It was I was starting to get my uh, scotch ready as uh, they were jumping up very handily. It leveled out towards the end of the day, but uh, had a big move midday. So th there is recovery possible. Yeah. Uh, for, for this one here, guys, SWSKS, uh, uh, I'm going to put as a secondary for now. I like the movement. I like the drop. We'll see if, it, if we can get something good out of this one. Um, you were mentioning Pack W, Peter, just now? Uh, did you no. mention? Oh, okay. No. Uh, <laughs> I thought you did. My mistake. But we can. Uh, no, no, let's go to Lucid first. We'll go to that one next. Uh, so we don't skip here. So Lucid this morning, these guys are down 10%, guys, 1.5 million. Uh, shares traded so you definitely got a nice little drop here uh looks like after i was earnings and things uh, slightly lower this morning yeah we've had a cup there's a couple of ev companies that have earnings either last night or today lucid was last night um as you might be able to guess by the the fact that they're down they did miss their number um in terms of the quarter they did confirm that they're on track to deliver ten thousand uh cars for the year which is seen as positive news by the market, which is maybe why it's only 10% uh, down. But uh, overall, yeah, it wasn't a great quarter for Lucid. I want to see, yeah, because yeah, you got Rivian down there in the list, although they weren't reporting that I'm aware of. The ones I was looking for are Fisker, which aren't up there, and Nikola. So, so since yeah. they're not on the list, I'll just mention them quickly. Fisker was interesting that uh, they, FSR is the, the, the ticker for Fisker. I don't think they have much volume so far this morning. They did report earlier on. They also missed their numbers. Um, Wait, I'm FS, sorry, Peter. What's the, what's the ticker? FS. FSR? Yeah. FSR. So, um, yeah, they're just under the uh, million dollar share mark here. But they, sh oh, you know what? Probably their stock price is why it wouldn't be on our gappers list. Um, yeah, or so, their ATR, hey, their ATR as well. Oh, it could be the ATR as well, right? So anyway, so they missed their numbers and they actually lowered their production guidance, which nobody likes. Interestingly, they lowered it quite significantly to somewhere between thirty-two to thirty-six thousand cars, where their previous estimate was about forty-two thousand cars on the year. That being said, in their last quarter, they only delivered about a, a one and a half thousand cars. So there's a big ramp up coming if they're even going to hit that. So uh, over the longer term, Fisker seems to be struggling to hit the uh, the, the forecast that they put forward. <clears throat> so I don't know that it's going to do much for you know an intraday trading today. But if you're looking at things longer term, you may want to keep an eye on these guys. Gotcha. Um, so yeah, take take that one, guys, if you like it. I'm gonna head over here to the next one on our list is uh, PayPal, and um, this obviously, I see, based on your comments, is moving pretty well this morning on the chat. Um, we are down seven percent, one point four million shares traded. Really like those numbers, like the gap down. Uh, interesting daily too, by the way. Look at the way this thing has been moving around here, and now we're kind of losing the bottom of this. So, Peter, latest and greatest on PayPal. Yeah, so they were an earnings play after hours. They were probably the big one that people were waiting for after the close yesterday. And here's the crazy thing, right? If you if you look at it right after whatever was 4.30 or so when they announced, you got this big candle that they spiked up and then they dropped down and just kept dropping. So 
the initial read was that they beat their numbers. They beat their numbers and they raised their guidance, right? All seems good. So a lot of people, I think, got stuck going along on this thing. But apparently the market decided that is not enough. They raised their guidance, but not to where the new forecast was. Everybody wanted them to raise it even more, and they, they didn't. So while their numbers were good and they said, in fact, we're actually going to raise our yearly guidance, the market's slamming them down and said, you know, you didn't give enough blood, man. We want more. So. <laughs> Uh, interesting. Um, PayPal looking really good today, guys. Swift and news dropping some more again this morning, even after yeah. hitting some lows yesterday, right? So we were as low as 76, uh, 76. We're below that again today. We tried to rally early on and, and back down here. So, uh, like, uh, PayPal this morning, definitely in play. I think this would trade very well. The volume is there. We got the catalyst. Everything's happening for it. This, this should be a really good one for today. So one of my favorites so far, um, we got some other ones on here. We got Carvana, which normally doesn't trade very well. I'm not really interested in it popping up here from 1074 from hitting the lows of 664, uh, 60, uh, 52 for a while. Right, it's been hitting that yeah, for a while. Yeah, they've they've had yeah. a few. Uh, they've had a lot of interest over the last few days. So they've oh. been on our list now for about three days straight, uh, Carlos. Yeah, maybe even yeah. since Thursday. But I certainly know they've been well, you know, I was uh, helping lead the show because they kept coming up. And, uh, you know, really, I, I honestly think that people are just excited the fact that they're not dead yet. Because mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. if you remember like two months ago, everybody was like, you know, they're going down, man. They're running out of funding. Uh, right, the business right. model looks poor. They're losing money on every car. And then they had their their earnings and they said, oh, you know, it's not as bad as you may have thought. We're, we're, we're OK. Um, and, uh, you know, they got this big jump up and now they're sort of bouncing around as people are trying to figure out, I think, what to do with them. So this is like this is a third, fourth day play for sure. But, you know, it's it's in play. And I'll admit, I didn't really watch it. There was a lot to trade yesterday, so I didn't watch it during the hours yesterday. But, uh, you know, the. It, it was it looked okay from after what i saw afterwards Go yeah on. that 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 is what i'm looking at now it looks like yesterday right actually this chart looks very very good it looks like you were getting some decent volume right um so hey hey listen man anything from the bottom when you're at the bottom you you can only report good news right so only only up you can go it looks like so earnings were well <laughs> you got a good pop here the last couple of days um you know what i'm inclined to put this here Inclined to put this on my secondary. Let's see what happens. All right. Um, next on the list, we got Wayfair, uh, which is doesn't hasn't been trading very well. Um, nice drop here this morning. I'm going to assume earnings, obviously. And it, look at this pre-market activity. It's just nothing happening right now for them. So even with earnings, nothing that looks good at the moment. Uh, is it earnings? I just want to make sure. Oh, no, it's not earnings. So what, what is what is this drop yesterday from them? Uh, after you know, hours. W W showed up on. They had um, they did have some news a couple of days ago, but I, I didn't really see anything yesterday. I thought this was mm -hmm. just sort of a, a follow on play because um, this is a you know I mean like as an internet retailer, frankly they don't do much that's of interest. Their earnings yeah. were last week on Friday, I think it was. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, you know they had good this morning. I do or sorry yesterday after the close, I do see that they're offering basically a secondary offering, a $600 million funding offering of convertible notes. So that that's usually, you know, dilutive to a company's stock and probably why it's sort of moving down pre-market. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I don't like the pre-market action now, but, um, you know, hopefully hits the scan as we can find something there. All right. We got Carvana. We looked at that. We looked at Wayfair. Um, I have Baba JD and some other, uh, Chinese companies here. Let's see what Baba is doing this morning. Uh, oh, I like Baba today. This is good, guys. Look at the drop here. Down 3.3, 321,000 shares traded. You guys know we like Baba away from the previous day close as much as possible with volume, and it can trade very well. Now looking good, though. What's going on with these guys? Again, just it keeps sliding here. Um, another big yeah, drop the Chinese there. stocks have been, been bouncing around here the last couple of days. Um, you know, they, they're starting to, we're hearing a couple of announcements. They're more rumors than announcements, but uh, of what they're going to do to split the company. If you remember, they said they were going to break into about seven different publicly traded entities uh, over yes. the next 
year or a couple of years. Um, they've started to talk about, uh, you know, an IPO of one of those divisions. Uh, there were some rumors about that last week. Uh, overnight, there was some news out of Hong Kong about that it might uh, take its logistics arm and separate that to uh, to trade on the Hong Kong market. Uh, again, no real details about it. So I think as people are, you know, seeing that maybe it won't be even North American tradable, right? It'll be trading in the U.S. That's going to affect the, the stock valuation. So, we're, you know, Carlos, it's it's a risky thing to trade Baba these days because it's going to move on news that may not be um, directly related to this market, which, which makes it tough to predict. Yeah, yeah, um, I agree. I like the I like the movement this morning. I'm going to add them to my list here. Um, so we'll put Baba on deck. And then we also have PDD as well on this list. And they are down 3.0% as well, um, 221,000 shares traded. So if you like this one, you it looks like it might be in play today. I'm going to go with Baba instead uh, this morning. So um, did we look at JD? We did not. Another one very similar to PDD as well. Again, all three of them very, very similar this morning. Uh, I'm just going to go with Baba on, on this one for now. Uh, all right, guys, let's stop here. Um, Peter, what do you have on, on deck that you like this morning? Um, a couple that we haven't talked about in, on the earnings front, Western Digital, WDC had earnings. They don't tend to trade a lot pre-market, but uh, again, semiconductors are, you know, semiconductors and electric vehicles are generally the, the, the talk of the day here, at least on earnings. But anyways, Western, WDC beat their numbers. Uh, they provided lower guidance on Q4, so it looks like they're, uh, you know, that, that's usually not good and, and drags them down. Uh, we mentioned uh, Fisker already, so that's good. Nikola is supposed to be coming out, NKLA. I haven't seen their numbers yet, but just know it's another one in this space that's supposed to be announcing this morning. And it uh, looks like they missed their numbers. I'm not shocked on Nikola's front. Um, and the last one that I'll mention is Duke Energy, D-U-K. Big company. Not a great trader. They beat on revenue, missed earnings, so sort of a mixed uh, result. And based on the trading, nobody cares. <laughs> so, but they said they don't. They don't tend to trade a lot uh, pre-market. So um, that's it. Oh, the one actually, one last one that we didn't talk about. I don't think PLTR. Sort of another blast from the past. We used to talk and trade these guys all the time. Uh, yeah, Palantir yeah. Technologies. Yeah, but I haven't really talked about them recently. They're gapping up nicely this morning on on big, big volume. So uh, must be their ETR, uh, ATR, so, sorry, as to why they're not on our list this morning. But um, uh, they, like all positive news, they beat their numbers, raised their guidance, and said that they're going to be profitable each of the following four quarters. So, um, so that's generally good news. Oddly, that's almost the same news that PayPal gave, but you saw the difference in reaction. So people apparently yeah. like it better out of Palantir. So that's that's one that's uh, in play. Yeah. Uh, so here you have it, guys. I don't know what the ATR is for this one, um, but it must be under under fifty cents, right? That's our buffer there. But definitely in play today, man. This is a blast yeah, from the past. You're right, cents. Peter. Um, 33 this is, cents is their ATR. 33? So, okay, yeah. So yeah. that makes sense. Um, but yeah, in play today, guys. So I'll add this to my list and let, let's hope. I don't really like stock on the $10, but it's a lot of volume here, guys. 8 million shares traded. Uh, we are down 15%. So this could be actually really, really nice for us today. All right, let's take it to the chat. Um, uh, we'll start here. PLTR, we looked at already. Matini, thank you for that. Um, let's look at Apple from Lorenzo. Let's see what's going on there. Apple this morning, we, we man, we got some good volume. Maybe a couple of, of, of transactions being recorded here, but 3 million shares traded. We are down almost a half or 8%, as you can see here. Could be interesting. Looks like you had a nice gap up here the, on Friday. It's a nice, was that an earnings on Friday on Apple? Did I, I missed earnings, huh? Yeah, yes, they, they had earnings last week and, uh, you know, the, and nice. it wasn't great. I mean, it was okay, but it wasn't great mm -hmm. earnings, but uh, yeah. it doesn't seem to matter with Apple. Any excuse to, to pull it up. I mean, they've yeah. actually had a series of sort of bad news, uh, you know, like they, they lost a, a big bid for um, for an AI sort of uh business uh, that they were going after mm -hmm. um but you know then you get the other side where buffett apparently said something nice about them so you know when when buffett says something nice it, that's usually worth a couple of billion on your stock 
Yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> <So>. absolutely. <laughs> um, it looks like yesterday was not great trading. Oh, man, these weeks are just wild. But it's Apple, right? It, you can't find good opportunities. We always like uh, to have Apple on our list. Um, it's always a good bet uh, to get these guys on there, especially when you have uh, their daily looking the way it is now, plus all this volume <laughs> this morning. So absolutely. Uh, I right, see AMD being thrown here. Um, yeah, a AMD had a big move yesterday. Uh, they well, actually they've had a couple of big moves over the last few days. Look at the three daily candles, right up, up, and yeah, up. Yeah, man. Wow. So uh, you know, if if you uh, if you probably weren't trading Carlos over the last few days, but they just no. had they had a couple of big jumps over the last few days, um, and uh, yesterday was just a just a good trend day. Uh, another one um, that uh, pulls them up. So like I said, I've, I've got my scotch ready in case I need it, but uh, we'll, we'll see what happens today. They're within shooting distance of a hundred, but it's a little aggressive yeah. to think they're going to get there today. Uh, but you know, it's been good. It's been good trading, at least in, in my opinion. The other one yeah. that's been surprisingly good trading is Microsoft. Um, they, you know, they, like I said the news today, they've got an AI, sorry, a cryptocurrency partnership with uh, Goldman Sachs, and the CBOE and others, um, but they've just generally been trading with good volume and, and fairly good price action. Friday was probably a better day than yesterday, but um, they, uh, you know, might might be worth keeping an eye on that if you like the majors. Yeah, I do like Microsoft. I think it can trade very well. I'm going to put it here as a possible, um, so we'll put that there. But uh, AMD, man, definitely going on the list as well. That looks really nice. So yeah, AMD's um, been pretty good. Yeah, yeah, we'll see where it, where it does. Nvidia there. hasn't been bad. You know, Nvidia and AMD tend to trade you know well together. But AMD was actually surprisingly a lot better than Nvidia was yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Um, and Peter, was there any news on it? I'm just catching up. Was there any news over at all, or just? Not really, no. I mean, yeah. not that I saw. AMD yeah. was just trading. I think it was just continued enthusiasm off of. Um, they did have some news on, again, like uh, last week, um, which you know sort of jumped their stock because they had a partnership with Microsoft. There you go, coming back again to that on. Guess what? AI. So AI. again, I yes, I thought yes. it was I thought it was sort of funny because. You know, Microsoft and AMD have been working together for decades now. So the fact that they're working together really isn't the news. But they threw AI in there, and of course, everybody went gaga. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's the key word right now. But that's what's hot. Um, yep. All right, let's see, guys. So right now we have we have I think we have a pretty good list. B, uh, BA, um, uh, PayPal, Baba, POTR, Apple, and AMD. We got some some secondary here that looks okay. They're down. Some of them are down quite a bit. Some decent volume. Um, let me see anything else we haven't looked at Nvidia we added so we're good there uh, let me check on our chat oh Tesla yeah let's look at Tesla I was asking the chat how has Tesla been trading um uh, nobody responded so I'm assuming not good <laughs> so let's no, see here it, it, I think it's personally I think it's been pretty hard to trade off the open it's like the last couple of days off the open it's picked a direction gone hard in that direction and then started to chop around you can sort of see that in the chart from yesterday right and uh, I don't yeah, know I, yeah. I I, I haven't liked it, so. Yeah, yeah. Um, is it worth as a possible, Peter, do you think, Tesla? I, you know, Tesla should always be a possible, at least recently, in my opinion, because it gets mm -hmm. the volume and it gets the interest. So you never know when it's going to have a good day. And it's one of those stocks where it'll be the day that you choose not to look at it when it decides to do something fun, right? When it trades well, <laughs> yeah. I got to say this, though, the volume keeps going lower and lower every time in the yeah. pre-market. I mean, now it's only 881,000. I have not seen Tesla trade that low in the pre-market in such a long time. So very interesting. But yeah, let's put it as a possible because I think there's, again, believe it or not, there's better stuff than Tesla on this list today. Yeah. So um, we, we will see. And um, like you yeah, said, you just got to watch it every day, right? Yeah, exactly. Yesterday was a little bit of a weird day in the markets because overall the market volume was down. We had a couple of things that were trading, you know, with with very high volume and very active. AMD was an example where they were like 170, 180 percent of their RVOL, whereas the overall market was only trading at about 80 percent. Uh, and Tesla was in that 80 percent range as well, if I remember. So yeah, it's uh, so today. Who knows, right? I mean, I don't know. I guess we'll find out when the bell rings and what starts to happen. So yeah. Yep, absolutely. Love this comment here from Pino. He says the AI honeymoon ends when Kodak announces they're in it. <laughs> oh <laughs> that's yeah, that's right. that's when you know it's bad. When actually uh, that's a oh yeah, man, that's, that's a great one. 
Kodak. Yeah, because they they were they were doing some trend jumping earlier, and uh, and yeah, Big once time. once they're in, the, <laughs> the party's over. It's time to time to turn on the lights and go home. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. So, so there we have it. We have a good list. BA, PayPal, Baba, POTR, Apple, and AMD. Um, I have Tesla, my top possible. There's some other ones here that look pretty good as well. We'll see what's happening there. What's Kodak? Good question. <laughs> um, all right. Let's head over to uh, our community events and announcements, and we'll come back and fine-tune this list. Well, and and Kip, you know, joking aside, that was what the fun was because everybody's like, Kodak still exists? And this was back when they jumped into, first they jumped into uh, cryptocurrency, right? And yeah. they were into, uh, uh, you know, th in that whole space, they announced they were in that. And then they announced they were into NFTs and we're like, what the, like, yes. what, what is yep. happening? <laughs> what, like, it sounded like they were just grasping at any straw. Oh, this is hot. We'll, we'll send something out. We're, we were surprised they didn't announce they had a, a, an EV uh, that they were going into <laughs> cannabis, and uh, and now of course we're waiting to hear their AI play. So, anyways, it's <laughs> absolutely it's, uh, it's, a, it's a good joke though. Yeah. Um, yeah so look, uh, I just wanted to uh, first thank John. He sat in this seat for the last couple of days, and I really appreciate him helping me out while uh, we were uh, taking over for Carlos. And we've been talking about some of the things that have been happening in the broader community. Uh, I don't know if, uh, oh, Carlos, can I uh, can I do that again? We can. Uh, yeah, see if yeah, I you can. can. Screen. Uh, as soon as you Let's got it. Yep. Hold on. If I do this, what's going to happen? But I just wanted to share as we've been sharing updates on Andrew. Andrew's still working at uh, getting uh, up to Everest there. So he's uh, he's going from uh, base camp two up to base camp three for acclimatization so that he can get ready to make another run at the summit. So uh, hasn't got to the summit yet. It's a long process, right? Because you got to wait for the weather gap. Uh, there's also apparently a very risky ice bridge they have to get over where they have to re-rope it. And apparently three Sherpas have already done died this year trying to secure that passage. So uh, anyways, I, we all appreciate that he's taking it cautiously. As you can see, Andrew always seems to be in good spirits when he's up there in the mountain. And if you've read his recent tweets, he's getting uh, very spiritual up there. So it seems to be a, a good event for him. He's sporting the Bear Bull uh, logo. You can see that right there. So uh, we appreciate the fact that he's... Uh, He's, uh, you know, uh, wearing the brand and waving the flag, and that's always fantastic. So wish him luck and, uh, and a safe journey, and I'm sure we'll be getting some future updates from him. So, all right. That being done, let's get back to uh, what's happening back here in trading land. Well, we had our uh, intro class, which we the onboarding class, which we always have on Mondays. Thank you to those that hosted it and those that attended. Uh, it'll be on again next Monday at 8 o'clock. So if you missed this one, you can go to next week's. It's Tuesday today, which means we're going to talk strategy. And Thor is presenting tonight. I know yesterday he was really focused on finishing his slides and getting all the material ready. He puts a lot of work into this, and it's very detailed. He is an excellent, excellent trader. And despite the fact yesterday he was poo-pooing Mondays, apparently he doesn't like trading Mondays. It's his worst day of the week. Uh, worst is, of course, a relative term, meaning that he only makes about a third the amount of money in Mondays as apparently he does every other day of the week, you know. Good problem to have, I guess. But uh, you know, if you want to know how he does that, attend this boot camp. He will, or sorry, attend this uh, strategy session. He will tell you and, and show you how he started to use Bookmap and incorporate that into his analysis and uh, his process. Next week, I have the luxury of presenting. I'm going to be talking about my lightning bolt pattern. Uh, it's one of the go-to patterns that I've got. This is a VWAP trade strategy. Both of these uh, webinars are at eight o'clock on Tuesdays. So this week and next week, hopefully we'll see you there. Wednesday is all about um, psychology. And this Wednesday, so tomorrow night, we have Kreta with us. I love Kreta's webinars. She's a fantastic, intelligent, and very capable person. Her stuff has helped me immensely. And that's why I've got so much love for Kreta. Her uh, webinars are early. So keep in mind that it's 5 p.m. So it's one hour after the market closed. Tomorrow night, May the 10th, um, and she's going to talk about how you can set appropriate goals for yourself. 
Next week, we'll be back at the regular time of 8 o'clock, and Mike will be talking about how to handle fear of missing out. We talk about this FOMO all the time, FOMO and ROMO, right? The fear of missing out and the regret of missing out. How do you manage that and not let it affect your trading going forward? It's tougher than we all think it should be. Um, that's why we need to focus on the skills to overcome it. So that'll be next week. Thursdays are all about mentorship, and this Thursday, like every Thursday, we've got John and Thor at 11 and 8, respectively, talking with us uh, on any topic you want in depth. You've got a whole hour to uh, pick their brains, so take full advantage of it if you're an elite member, and you can get into the webinar room and talk with them. Uh, today is Tuesday, which means we don't have our options room open, but it's there Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So uh, if when you want to go and uh, talk options, they'll be ready and waiting for you. So um, you can uh, see Jared and Megan in the options room tomorrow or Friday from 9 to 11, and then again for an hour, noon to 1. Of course, our, our uh, equity chat room is always open. It's open now, and it's open until the market close. So hopefully you'll visit us there. You know, Join as a member, and uh, you can take advantage of that. I'll tell you how in just a minute. But if you want details on the market and how to trade, go to tradingterminal.com. It's got tons of stuff. I was just telling someone uh, earlier, in fact, as we're starting boot camp, P Capital Boot Camps, our next session started yesterday. So we're already in flight and uh, it's happening right now. And uh, I was telling people, if you don't have uh, a trading platform, you're going to need one for the boot camp. And you can use the simulator in Trading Terminal as your platform if you want. It gives you live trading. It's completely free. If you go to the simulator, you can access it all day and, and trade as if you're you know, trading for real uh, and, and sort of get some experience, both watching the market and the experience of actually, you know, setting some trades and uh, winning or losing by those. If you want to watch uh, the markets and get some advance notice on what you may want to trade, look at the gappers, uh, sorry, the uh, scanners that Carlos was just showing you. And those scanners will uh, you know, help you throughout the day. We use them in the morning to talk what's gapping up and down, as you can see populated right there. All right. So as I mentioned, if you wanted to join, here's the ways. Uh, you can uh, use the Educational Center intro. It gives you a discounted price of only $24. If you're listening to me right now, use the code PREMARKET24, and you can take advantage of that. If you then want to join on a more regular basis, use the Basic or Elite monthly. And then, of course, the best deal, as I say all the time, is on the annual package. Uh, right now, as, you know, as long as Andrew's on the hill, our Mount Everest deal will be going at 60% off that price for only $9.99 for the whole year. You get access to our chat rooms, all of our training material. It's a great, uh, a great deal. So hopefully you'll take advantage of that. Use the code Mount Everest, all one word, all caps, uh, in the promo code section to make sure you get that discount. All right, let's go to setting some levels. Right, thank you. Um, thank you very much, Peter. All right, guys, let's get to it. So here we have on our list this morning, I have a couple of things that look good. BA um, still maintain this pop that it did a few minutes ago. We have PayPal, which continues to drop here, guys. Looks like it wants to make a new low. So this is this is hot today. PayPal is definitely, definitely uh, looking good this morning. Here's a Baba as well. I like that one. POTR is good. Oh, look at that squeeze there, a couple of cents. Um, we have uh, Apple. AMD and we also have plug. So some pretty good lists. Let's let's do our levels here. And then we have test as our top possible. If we do have time, we'll do levels for as well because I know many people are going to have um that list there as well. Uh Carlos, I I owe, I owe Peter a drink. He has put up his heart out. He has put his heart out and so in the morning show. Oh, I'm sure he's done an amazing job. Yeah. And I owe him more than a drink. I owe him like a couple of drinks and Thanks. shots. Thanks, Gary. <laughs> No, thank you, man. I appreciate you guys. You and John both covering for me while I was gone. So thank you so much for that. Um, let's go ahead, guys. Let's take a look at uh, some highs and lows here. We have high and low off the pre-market on BA is going to be 202.32. So we got to slap a level on there. And then we're also going to put another one over here over at 205.84. So if you see across the board there, we have a tons of touches there. So definitely you want to have that level there. There's actually one below that looks pretty good as well. It's a lot of days opening, closing right around 204.14. So let's do that there as well. 204.14, a good level um, for us here. If I, uh, there we go. 204.14. Now towards the bottom, uh, below the pre-market low, we have plenty highs and lows for the last two trading days. 
previous day close really slamming against the low of the pre-market as you can see there um below all these levels we have here well we have a couple the big one is going to be this one down here 193 28 so we will slam a level there and then another one right over here um, more of an area around 195.42 i'm really basing this of this wick here and the opening of this date here right um so you really got that confirmation there I'm not sure there's anything else if we scroll to the left does not look like uh maybe some more over here but for the most part 195.42 a good level towards the bottom right now this is showing signs of strength though up two percent this morning here is a uh, paypal guys continues to drop um high of the pre-market 72 uh 48 our low of our pre-market just being created here down at 69 uh, 70 so we will slam a level there for now that can change as we keep moving down here um uh, towards the top of the pre-market low above the pre-market low we do have a level here uh it's more around 71 45 71.45 got a couple of days you know slamming again so that's a good one there and uh let me see do we have anything else in between there it's a nice gap let's see if we can find a good level in between here no there's not a whole lot 69 this one here has a lot of touches therefore that is what that's a new pre-market low you can see that we're bouncing from there in here we really don't have a lot this is a very minor minor level of support resistance guys 70 75 um, you can put that on on there you can see in the pre-market we had a little action around it but the big levels are this one 71.45 and 69.70 you got a lot of confirmation on the daily there now if we were to drop from this level this is 69.70 here right if we do drop that it got a big big level of support happening right around 68.31 you can see a ton of action you got there and uh we'll see if paypal can get there right now looking very weak guys down seven percent uh this morning so that is paypal let's look at baba today um i like baba dropping down like this right so we're gapping down three percent not crazy volume only 390 that's not too bad low of the pre-market 89.30 um towards the top i'm only going to mark down the high of the pre-market over at 81.48 and then above there you can see the highs and lows for the last two trading days um pretty much got you covered there let's go to the left let's find something below this um pre-market low last time we were here you can see we, we hung out for a little bit um we went as low as 79.52 and then we found a way to bounce you can see that there beautiful bounce and we went we went up quite a bit here right uh went all the way to uh 102 we're right back down to this area this was just in march uh so let's see what happens um i would like something even lower than this if we have it and we do november december uh, it looks like there's uh, another level here not the best daily pretty choppy in there let's see if we find something that makes sense as far as levels yeah i don't see anything big maybe the 78 15 but it's not the best level but maybe 78 15 has got a couple of touches there uh, on baba towards the bottom so there you have it guys um let's see how the action comes in on this one i do like when we're gapping down like this but uh, i won't be looking to play just a long back to viva because this is looking rather weak guys especially in the long term picture here if you look at the days it has not been having fun this thing look very, looks very very weak um so let's see if it can continue here uh potr you know what i know it's active almost 10 million shares trade today but this is one of those tickers i'll do the levels for but it's probably not one that i'm going to trade just because uh, i think this can be very choppy uh, i mean this price range i don't like as much i like things over 20 usually over 15 at least um uh but let, let's see let's see what happens um 940 high of the pre-market 884 83 is the low of the pre-market in between here we do have this one spike for uh, recently uh, over at 904 so we'll mark that down as well you can see we've been flirting with that this morning in the pre-market so you definitely want to have that down and then above that 904 you do have another area over at around 910 right so we can mark that there as well um this one doesn't move much guys so you know you can take a little bit more shares be careful you know just manage your risk accordingly um but you're not moving you know a dollar uh, on this you can really take a little bit more shares and, and manage your risk pretty good on that one um all right and then towards the bottom below the law of the pre-market uh pre-market low we're going to mark down a61 seems to be a good one if you draw a line across the board you can see it clearly how many touches we have had right in this area right so you definitely want to have that down um as well so there you have it that is a uh, plTR in case in case we get a run here right we are gapping up 17 percent which is quite a lot we do have 962 969 and we've been as high as 1022 here on plTR if today's the day 
that they can they, that they would like to do that everything is prime for it we got the volume we've been here before look at the gap up we had before we rally on that day and we continue to the next day to make new highs so we could be in that same situation now we'll have to see how the, the market open treats pltr here is apple i'm going to remove some of the levels that we have here recently we're just kind of stuck right in the middle of the highs and lows for the last two trading days good pop a few days ago on earnings you can see that there we we're talking about this earlier earlier um trying to hold this um this 172.54 i'm gonna put uh, i'm gonna put that level on there i'll still like to keep this level even if we do drop and make a new pre-market low um, we'll come back and know what that new pre-market low is going to be but um once you do that you're pretty much surrounded you know highs and lows for the last two trading days got you covered previous day close i don't really think you need to add anything out on apple guys keep it very very simple the only thing we'll come back and do and, and do here is update the pre-market low as this continues to drop so nothing to really do there uh, right now um <laughs> uh, just by clicking pen yes <laughs> by clicking pen to join peter <laughs> uh no 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 hey, I, I i've dropped the clicking <laughs> I, I haven't heard it today i, I have I, not heard I it dropped today. it man well see carlos I, I broke myself the habit you weren't here but on friday decided because everybody was clearly so frustrated i brought out if you want me oh, to click no i way. brought out the mega clicker i won't even click it today so oh we're, we're man breaking the habit. that is Anyways, great that is great i'm trying to i'm trying to you know i'm, I'm off the habit so yeah we're we're there on the wagon go. right now guys help, uh, help me stay clean yes yeah let's it. keep let's keep them clean uh here's amd guys three amazing moves the last couple of days really really going here low of the pre-market 9006 9406 and the high of the pre-market 9537 we'll slam two levels there so you guys slam that thumbs up over on youtube we appreciate it very much we're sitting at 101 we'll love to get to 150 that is our buffer there, guys. If we can do 150, we really, really appreciate you. So if you haven't done so, take a second, take a moment, and, and slam that button for us. Well, we, we, we are really appreciative of that. All right, towards the bottom, guys, I do see 92, 94, another area where we got tons of really good touches, too, because here you can see that's been some good support for this stock. Every time we hit that, we we, we, we bounce pretty, pretty nicely there. We have a couple of days slamming against that as well here. So you definitely want to have that on your list. 92, 94 towards the bottom. Uh, and then one, one last one here, 91.59. I don't think that's where AMD is headed because right now the momentum is on the upside. Um, unless we get some news that drives this thing down, uh, this thing is looking really good. Now, after three days of this, you know, it's very tough to continue on this momentum. But it doesn't mean we have to come back down to 91.58. We could just do some sideways action here as we figure out our next steps or the next big news comes out that moves the, start, the stock market and helps uh uh big players like AMD, the apple and some other ones that we love are, are usually our usual suspects move in that direction here's plug guys towards the bottom um we are going to mark down high of the pre-market at 855 towards the bottom of that we do have the low of the pre-market at 834. this is another one that I'm, i like pltr i might not keep on my list I, 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 we'll see um it's just i don't think it trades very well uh, i like that we're down here 8.5 i like the volume we have 3.7 million shares traded we haven't been here in a very, very, very long time. So definitely 52-week low looks like. Um, let's just confirm. Let's get to me. Oh, yeah. 52-week low for sure. Um, so, yeah, we don't, have, we don't have nothing down here in quite some time. We're going back, back to 2020. Since we came back here, let's just go ahead and mark some levels. We have a 711. We'll mark that there. And we also have this area around 780. Got a couple of days using that support, resistance, support, and more support over here as well. So there you have it for plug. And then towards the top, um, let's get to a couple of levels here. Oops. Let's get to the right ticker right over here. Here's plug. Let's get to, uh, oh, yeah, towards the top of your cover, guys. Highs and lows for the last two trade days. Do not need to add anything else on this. Pretty much set. Um, we'll see. You know what? For me, I'm going to move this down now. This is just, just a really big possible um i prefer to watch tesla really uh, instead of plug so i'm going to move tesla to my main list this morning we'll remove it from our secondary list and we are all set there so um, levels for tesla guys we're stuck between the highs and lows of the last two trading days do not have to do a whole lot here i am going to mark down what the price action is now you got a lot of touches on there that is going to be that 169.63 so definitely mark that level the law of the pre-market is around 169.31 but here you can see the resistance you had uh, the support you've been having all morning so you definitely want to have that down and then towards the bottom uh, in addition to the highs and lows of the last two trading days just going to mark down 165 79 as the volume gets over a million shares traded here on 
on Tesla. All right, with that said, guys, let's get over to our, our moderators, see what our moderators are watching this morning. So let me go ahead and bring that over here and see what our team has on deck today. So we'll just save with this video and bring this over. Peter, as I'm doing this, um, did you find anything else that's not on our list that you like this morning? No, no, I think I stuck to the list. I posted my uh, my watch list already, so uh, we're, we're locked and loaded. There's there's lots to look at. Yeah, excellent. Um, over here, guys, our moderators list, we have, uh, let's start with Thor. Thor's looking at PayPal, Shopify, uh, NVIDIA, and Apple. Uh, Susan's looking at NVIDIA, Apple, uh, overall market, the SPY and the Qs there. Um, Jerry looking at PayPal, SWKS, energy stocks today. Plug, AMD, and Baba, those last three on his secondary list. Then we have Megan. She's looking at the overall market as a spy there. And PayPal, which again, PayPal looking really good this morning, guys. Very active. Uh, 2 million shares, down 7.3. That one is hot today. Um, no IPOs, no SPACs this morning. Peter, you are looking at AMD, Tesla, and PayPal. Secondary list, Lucid, PLTR, and Plug. Uh, Amen has a potential long today, NVIDIA calling that out risky for the way he trades it, so be careful there. And then uh, adding Riot to Jared's, um, Jared's list there uh, for a possible turnaround. And Brian's list joining us in a few minutes here to trade lives, 10 minutes away from the open. SWKS, Tesla, PayPal, PLTR, and NVAX on Brian's list this morning. So there you have it, friends. Thank you so much for joining the pre-market prep this morning. Really appreciate you guys being on with us. Um, we will see you again tomorrow at 8.30 as we prepare for... Uh, our market open but have an, have an amazing trading day and we'll see you guys uh, tomorrow thanks carlos thanks everybody have a great day